had this friend, Mark Kerr, who I made my first film about called The Smashing Machine. He was like always the guy like that would be breaking things up and didn't want to fight, like just a real gentle, kind guy. So it always bugged me out. I thought it was like a huge contradiction that this was the same guy that was like pummeling people into submission. He's going right after him, very aggressive. Kicks to the midsection that time, another front kick. Little blood on the face of him. Oh, huge takedown. He needs him in the face and he needs him again. Beautiful. I, I didn't know anything at all about making films. So uh, I wanted to find someone who did. And I had a friend named John Himes who, uh, you know, had made, had directed a film in the past. So, and I, you know, I was friendly with him and I trusted him. So I went to him with the idea. I actually think I had him come to my apartment and I had a bunch of videotapes of Mark's fights. You know, and I played the fights for John and I told him, you know, what I thought and why I thought this would make a great story. You know, and he agreed. He said, you know, man, that would be totally amazing. Uh, you know, I said, well, what do I have to do? You know, and he said, well, you know, I don't know. He said, I I'm in. I'll do it. You know, just uh, let me know when you have plane tickets to Japan and we'll get started. The first fight where he pretty much loses to, to this Russian guy, Igor Volchanchin. And, uh, you know, at that time, you know, Mark was, like I said, he was considered the best fighter in the world. So, you know, when we went there and eventually it, it was called a no, con a no contest because of illegal moves. But, you know, he pretty much took a beating and that was shocking and scary. You know, it was a really it was a really weird thing. Also, because like, you know. We're holding cameras on the guy and I'm standing, you know, three feet away and then it's like his blood flying and it was just like a way more violent thing in person than I had imagined it being, you know, because as a wrestler myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I was pretty used to physical contact, but being up close to this stuff was, it was shocking and, you know, and, uh, and Mark got hurt pretty bad, you know, and that was a really a really scary thing. But anyway, from there, you know, I remember on the plane ride home from Japan, it was like a 14 hour trip. And uh, the director, John Himes, like said to me, man, you know, I think we have a movie here. You know, that was amazing. And, uh, you know, and I, I said, yeah, you know, I really think we do too. You know, it, it's a very difficult thing to suddenly have your life put under a microscope, you know, which I'm sure Mark didn't, didn't realize the extent of it. I didn't realize the extent of it, you know, and, and before long there was this pressure where, you know, like, okay, suddenly this guy is, is, you know, we're expecting him to do something, but it's not happening. So, you know, he came to me and he said, uh, you know, I have this problem. I'm addicted to these painkillers, Nubane it was called. So the decision that he made or ran by me was he had known this kind of quack doctor who was willing to prescribe him methadone. So he said to me like, okay, John, you know, why don't you stay in my house with me? And, uh, you know, you, you watch over me and make sure that I don't, you know, shoot up or do any drugs or do anything. And, and I'll, you know, get on this methadone and I'll, you know, kick this, this drug, you know, I'll wean myself off this drug, you know, and, and you can help me. You know, and we argued about it a little bit. I, I thought it was not such a good idea, but ultimately I, I agreed to it because, I mean, I was pretty naive about drug addiction myself. I didn't know much about this stuff, you know, so I agreed thinking, you know, that I was going to help Mark out. And, you know, at that same time, I'm thinking to myself, like, well, you know, what is what's happening to my film? the ethical dilemmas that, that were taking place during that period of time were just, they were huge. You know, I mean, I, I just didn't, you know, I, I really, I don't know to this day, like if I did the right things or, you know, how I could have handled the situation better, you know, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are ways that I could have, but it was, it was a really confusing situation, you know, and, and when it came down to it, you know, I had to make the decision to, you know, put the camera down to, to try and save somebody's life, you know. And like I said, when you, it's not just 
anybody. This is, is a guy I was really close with, so it was a really difficult period in time. He got sober in the film, but then after that he relapsed and he's been on drugs and off drugs and on drugs and off drugs. And when he tells you he's not doing drugs, you don't know if it's true. And, you know, it, it's just, it's a difficult thing. So, you know, although I, I wouldn't say our relationship is strained in any way, I think we're somehow not as close as we were before I made the film. I mean, that's kind of sad in a way and I'm not exactly sure why that is. But, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's like we went through a war together, you know? But the only thing is, like, I don't have to show the wounds of the war. Mark does. You know, his story is out there that, you know, the world can rent it from Netflix and see, you know, all of these things that he's done to himself, you know? And, and I'm hidden behind the camera, you know? So, I mean... The subject of a documentary is brave, a brave individual, you know, especially if they're, they're willing to, uh, you know, be as honest as he was.